Welcome back YouTube, I'm Ahmed again from in-depth tech reviews and here is my first video about the Pixel 6 series. Sorry for being late but as you may know I live in Dubai and it was hard for me to get my hands on the 6 Pro but finally it's here. In this video I will talk about the exclusive features that we didn't see in older models and how they can improve your experience which is something I didn't see a lot of videos talk about in detail. My in-depth review for the 6 Pro is in the works as well and I will do whatever it takes to make it the best review to answer all your questions but for now let's take a look at the exclusive software features. Let's start with the typing experience. Gboard on the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro is different in a lot of ways. First it has a bolder font compared to my Pixel 5 and because the 6 Pro has a curved display, the buttons are not edge to edge. However, they are pushed towards the center to avoid having any buttons in the curves, which is better in this scenario. Under Gboard settings then text correction, there is a new toggle for grammar check. This feature will underline the grammar mistakes in blue, and when you tap the sentence, it will show you the correct one in the suggestions strip. The feature works entirely on device without the need to have an internet connection, so I will turn on the airplane mode and try again. As you see, it still works as expected. But the most exciting change in Gboard is the new assistant voice typing. This feature is super fast, accurate, and useful. It's located under Gboard settings, then voice typing. Here you will see two new toggles, assistant voice typing to turn on the feature, and auto punctuation to automatically add the punctuation while dictating. There is also a show voice commands option for the full list of commands you can use. And now let's put it into action. You can activate the assistant voice typing using the mic button or via Google Assistant by saying the magic word followed by the word type. So let's try this scenario. What's your plan for tonight? Send. What about dinner in a cheesecake factory? Clear all. What about a movie night? Send. By the way, I got my new Pixel 5. Delete. Delete. Pixel 6 Pro 128 GB. Party emoji. Send. Gboard's assistant typing is so cool. Cool emoji. Full stop. New line. I'm using it right now. Clear. Undo. Send. I can't believe how easy it is. Exclamation mark. Send. Stop. As you saw, the feature is smart enough to handle a conversation that includes text and emojis. Not only this, but I was able to add my own punctuation and start a new line. The feature also works with forms and emails, so let me try to send a new message using Gmail. Set recipient. In-depth tech reviews. First one, next, previous, daily report, add EMAD to CC, next, dear team, attached is the weekly report till the 19th of November, as agreed I added all the extra fields as per today's meeting, so please check and feed me back, regards. One more thing worth mentioning, if you stop talking, it will stop automatically after a few seconds, but if you want to keep it active all the time, you can double tap the mic, which will show you an orange ring around it. And in this case, to stop the feature, you need to tap the mic again, or say the word stop. Gboard also got some visual enhancements. First, the translation interface is more refined with more rounded corners to match Android 12. And when you tap on a misspelled word, it will show you the suggestions and add to dictionary options in the suggestions strip instead of appearing as an overlay menu like before. And now it's time for today's sponsor. This is the Heidi's Key 4. This small multifunctional security key is perfect to keep your PC and password safe. It uses Bluetooth, NFC, or even USB dongle to detect when you're in close proximity to your PC. The key is an innovative FIDO certified device that can be used for both password-based and passwordless logins. And with just a push of a button, you can access your PC and enter all of your passwords you have saved on it. 
secret. Remembering the passwords for every website is a thing of the past. And the moment it detects your way, it will lock everything up so your nosy colleagues can no longer copy your clearly superior work. You can also set it up as a replacement to your RIFD card to unlock doors without carrying a card. It's super secure, of course, complying with the latest security standards. All of this is just one click away. To find out how you can buy one, check the link in the description below. Use promo code 10 Heidi's to get 10% off your Amazon purchase or promo code 15 Heidi's to get 15% off if you decide to buy from their website directly. So keep your password and PC secure with Heidi's key 4. Thank you Heidi's for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about the new gaming dashboard of Android 12. This is not something new to the Pixel 6 series, however, it's fully functional only on those two models, the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. The first change is in the Play Store. Now we have a dedicated category under games called Optimized for Pixel 6, and when you go inside, it will show you all the games that are fully functional with the new gaming dashboard of Android 12. While older Pixel models do have the same gaming dashboard of Android 12, but none of them will give you the ability to optimize the performance like the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. The second difference is under Settings. Now when you go to Settings, then in apps you will see a new menu item called game settings and from here you can activate the gaming dashboard and do not disturb for games on older models to access the same menu you need to go to notifications then do not disturb then schedules and tap the gear icon next to gaming so on the pixel 6 it's a little bit easier to reach now let me run one of the games optimized for the pixel 6 which is asphalt 9 if you have the do not disturb for games activated once you run the game, you will get a banner at the bottom of the screen telling you that do not disturb is activated with a button called the change which will take you right away to the gaming dashboard. Or you can use the floating button like before and it will take you right away to the same dashboard we saw in Android 12 in my previous videos. Beside the same shortcuts like screenshot, screen recording and the FPS, now the performance option is active and when you tap on it, it will give you three different options either to get the maximum performance, standard, or battery saver. And when you change the mode, it will ask you to restart the game for the action to take effect. And keep in mind, whatever you choose here will always remain the same unless you change it yourself. You will also notice that Google Play Games is now part of the gaming dashboard. It will show you the level, your profile name, and the email address used. And when you tap on it, you will get a quick access to your profile and the privacy settings in the Google Play app. These are the only two options between the Pixel 6 and the older Pixel models when it comes to the gaming dashboard. But the question is, do the performance optimization options make a difference when it comes to your battery and the performance? So let's find out. In this test, I will play Asphalt 9 using all three modes with the same track and the car to easily spot the differences between the three. From the first second, there is a clear difference between them in the level of detail. The battery saver mode producing a blurry and less detailed image. The performance mode looks a lot sharper with very clear text and the standard is somewhere in between. So this confirms that the gaming dashboard is certainly making a difference, so let's continue to see even more. In this part, the performance mode has a much better blur effect to give you the sense of speed, while the battery saver mode has almost zero effects, resulting in a less joyful gaming experience. The standard is very close to performance when it comes to effects, but the graphics are not as sharp. And you will clearly see the difference between them when you take a look at other cars, the performance mode is making a big difference here. Let's continue with the race to see if there is any difference in the FPS. The performance and the standard modes didn't drop below 30 frames throughout the entire race, while the battery saver mode was slightly behind, with a minimum of 28 frames per second in certain parts. To test the impact on battery and temperature, I played Asphalt 9 using the performance and battery saving modes for 30 minutes. Both started at 31.5 degrees Celsius and the battery level was at 70%. Both were connected to the same Wi-Fi network, same brightness, and do not disturb for games was activated. After 30 minutes of continuous playing, the temperature levels were exactly the same at 35.3 Celsius with only 1% difference between the two when it comes to the battery. But keep in mind this only applies to Asphalt 9. So maybe things will be different with other games. Now let's talk about Google Assistant and with the 6 Pro I got the new Quick Phrases feature which is located under my Google Assistant settings. Here you will find Quick Phrases that includes two different toggles. The first one will allow you to control your alarms and timers by saying the word stop or snooze and the second one is for incoming calls by saying answer or decline. So let me show you how it works. Now the alarm started to ring and as you see the mic is now active waiting for me to say the command and in the center it's showing me one of the suggested commands I can use. So all I need to do in this case is to say the word stop.
Or I can also use the word snooze. And that's also the case with the timers. Stop. And here's how it works for phone calls. Decline. Answer. Answering. As you heard, it will give you a voice feedback followed by a tone before answering which will give you a slight chance to hang up in case it happened by mistake. And by the way, you can tap on the command and in this case, it will show you how the feature works in a floating card that you can dismiss by tapping on it again or use the X. Now let's talk about the new camera features. The first one is the wide balance slider. When you tap anywhere on the viewfinder, you will get a slider on the left to change the color's temperature, and it has enough range to help you in all scenarios. When you change the wide balance, a reset button will appear at the top to return back to the default value. The only downside in this feature is it doesn't save your preference, so every time you open the camera app, it will return back to the original settings. And by the way, you can turn off the wide balance slider under the camera settings. When you scroll a little bit down, you will see a toggle here called wide balance. Once you turn off the switch, it will disappear from your viewfinder. The second new feature is called the speech enhancement. When you try to take a video using the front facing camera and then expand the settings, you will see a new toggle here called speech enhancement. Once activated, the phone will minimize the background noise when you start recording videos using your front-facing camera, which is a nice feature for people who use their phones for vlogging, and you will also see an indicator here at the top left if you have the feature activated. And now let me show you a quick sample with and without the feature. So now I'm testing the speech enhancement feature of the camera. I'm trying to walk next to the highway to give you an idea about how the background noise will impact the video. Right now, I'm not using the feature, so let me switch on the speech enhancement to see if there is any difference. Now the speech enhancement feature is activated and I'm still walking next to the highway to give you an idea about the difference in audio quality. And if you are planning to purchase this phone for vlogging, this will also help you understand how it works. As per the sample, the speech enhancement wasn't perfect. You can clearly hear the noise cancellation filter trying to clip the noise all the time. And it wasn't smooth 100%, but at least my voice was clearer with the feature activated. Next, the new motion tap. And here you will find two different choices, action pan and long exposure. And if you want to learn more about each one, you can tap on the question mark. To simplify things for you, both should be used with moving subjects. Action pan will keep the subject in focus and blur the background. While long exposure will do the opposite, it will blur the moving subject and keep the background in focus. And now let me show you some samples from each one. Let's start with action pan. In this scenario, I was waiting for a car to pass by and then hit the shutter key once it enters the frame. Taking the shot took only one second, however, the phone took around five seconds to process the image, as shown here in my screen recording. But the result was great. The car is perfectly in focus and the background got a nice blur effect to give you the sense of motion. Here's another great looking shot and the blur effect is even more dramatic in this one, which I like. But don't expect it to work perfectly well in all scenarios. I would say 80% of the time you will get the results you are waiting for, but sometimes it misses the moving subject like in this one, for example which is expected as the feature is currently in beta. When it comes to the long exposure, one of the best scenarios is to capture moving water. And here is one of the shots I took in the pool using the 4X telephoto lens. And it looks stunning. You can also use it to capture light trails at night, which is another common scenario for long exposure shots. And the last feature to talk about in the camera department is called Face Umbler. If you are not familiar with the feature, it automatically fires up the ultra wide lens once it detects a moving subject in the scene. And this will help the main sensor keep the subject in focus, even if it's moving. You won't find anything under settings related to the feature. However, it works behind the scene. To test the feature, I activated the timer for 10 seconds and kept jumping on front of the camera continuously until it took the shot. I did the same on my Pixel 5 to see if this feature really works and make a difference. And here is the result. The photo coming out of the Pixel 5 is a mess and I'm completely blurred out. While the 6 Pro did an amazing job keeping me in focus and the result is great. The only downside here, the subject looks very soft and lacks details. For reference, I took another shot without moving and you can clearly see how much more details it has. Either way, I still see it a very useful feature and the outcome is much better than any other phone I have ever seen. Now let's talk about the new magic eraser feature in Google Photos. 
and officially it's exclusive to the Pixel 6 series however you can get it on your older Pixel phone if you want and I created a separate video about this so I'm gonna leave its link in the description if you are interested. The reason I have the Pixel 5 in this part is to see if Magic Eraser is any better on the Pixel 6 using the new Tensor chip or it works exactly the same. I will start with this photo on both and then tap on edit and start Magic Eraser at the same time on both as you see the Pixel 6 Pro is much faster compared to the Pixel 5 in identifying the objects and now let's compare the accuracy. Let's tap on erase all and the first difference I see is on the left side. If you take a look here on this part the Pixel 5 missed some people while the Pixel 6 didn't. However on the other side the Pixel 5 was more accurate so if you take a look here you'll see the 6 Pro missed this person. So when it comes to accuracy both are equally good but the 6 Pro was faster. Here's one more shot so let's tap on erase all. And you will see both missed the same part so the accuracy is exactly the same so the only real benefit you will get from the tensor when it comes to magic eraser is the speed now let's talk about the new wallpapers that comes with the pixel 6 when you tap on a change wallpaper you will see a new bloom category it includes 12 still images six out of which are for dark theme and the other six are for light theme in addition to the live versions when you go inside the live wallpapers you will be able to change the style by tapping on the edit button and each one will give you three different styles to choose from and all of them will adapt nicely with the dark theme similarly you have another one that includes the rest of the wallpapers if you want to get the pixel 6 live wallpapers on your older pixel model i created a dedicated video about this so i'm gonna leave its link in the description below in addition to the live wallpapers there's another category here called motif and this one includes 12 still images to choose from now let me show you the new features i spotted under settings the first one is under network and the internet when you go inside your sim card settings and scroll all the way down you will see a new toggle here called allow 2g as per the description it says for emergency calls 2g is always turned on the second change is under battery then battery usage now the graph at the top is interactive when you tap on any of the bars it will show you the usage during this period only and each bar represents two hours worth of usage and when you tap on it again it will return back to normal next under sound and vibration then now playing you will see a new toggle here called show search button on lock screen this feature will allow you to search for songs playing nearby in case your phone couldn't identify the song so for example i took a screen recording for the feature i started to play a song near my phone and after a few seconds i got this search button tapping on it will start searching for the song online and after a few seconds i got the name this feature is expected to come to older pixel models but till now i couldn't get it on my pixel 5 or the pixel 4a another change under sound and vibration when you go to live caption now there is a new menu item called languages and the translation when you go inside you will be able to translate your captions from a specific language to another so for example here i'm adding the german language and i can add three more if i want i have french italian and japanese but japanese is the only language in beta at the moment and then you can choose the language to translate it to here you have english in addition to the same four languages we just saw so here i have one of the german videos to play and show you how it works As you saw I'm getting the captions and at the same time they get translated on the fly and that shows how powerful is the tensor chip in this kind of tasks. And this is one of the features that you can use offline like we saw in Gboard. To do this you need to download the language models first by tapping on add a language and then choose the one you want and also under translate to. One last thing to show you under sound and vibration is adaptive sound. This is not a new feature to the Pixel lineup but it was missing from the Pixel 6 models when they first came out for some reason. So if you have it under settings make sure to activate it because it improved the sound quality of my 6 Pro a lot. One of the things that I found some reviews talk about is the LTPO display of the Pixel 6 Pro and it can go as low as 10 Hz. But I found this information to be inaccurate at least for now. So let me show you why. Under display, when I scroll down to smooth display, it clearly says here it ranges between 60 up to 120 Hz. And to confirm this, I activated the show refresh rate toggle under developer options. And if you take a look here, the display will never go below 60 Hz, even if I kept my phone steady like this. And even when I go to the always on display, 
sometimes it gets stuck on 120 hertz and this could be one of the reasons why some people complain about the battery life of the 6 pro so that's pretty much it for today those are the most exciting software features exclusive to the pixel 6 series in case you found any other feature that i didn't mention in this video please let me know in the comments or reach me out on social media so i hope you like my video and if you do please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos thank you for watching